Hi again everyone. In this tutorial we're going to look at some of the applications of triple integrals and in particular we're going to look at questions where we're asked to calculate the centre of mass of a given solid. Now I'm going to firstly look at question 133. We'll do both parts and in, uh, if we read the question the question asks us to use spherical coordinates to find the centre of mass of these given regions assuming the density is constant throughout. Alright, well let's have a look at part A. Here our solid um, region is just those sets of points x, y, z such that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is less than or equal to 1 and z is greater than or equal to 0. Now, some of you may recognise this as a field hemisphere that lies above the xy plane and um, the hemisphere I guess has a radius of, um, of 1. So let's draw this particular region and we'll get some better geometric understanding of the region. Okay, well firstly let's just look at the boundaries. If we change this less than or equals to to an equal sign then I get x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1 which is a sphere with centre at the origin and radius 1 but I'm only interested in the points that um, lie on or above the xy plane so instead of a sphere I'm going to have a hemisphere so this then is a uh, my solid omega. Now we're asked to calculate the centre of mass of omega. Now firstly notice that there's a line of symmetry the OZ, positive OZ axis and that the hemisphere is sort of just you know wrapped around the, the Z axis uniformly. Now also since the density is constant we can conclude that the centre of mass must lie somewhere on this OZ axis. So let's write down that now I'm over as a field hemisphere and recognise that since our density function is constant and our solid is symmetric about the OZ axis the centre of mass of omega must lie on the OZ axis. In other words, the X component and the Y component for the centre of mass coordinates are both zero. Now we're asked to do this question using spherical coordinates, so let's look at how we can describe this hemisphere in spherical coordinates. So let's just remind ourselves about sphericals. Remember sphericals involves two angles and a length. Theta is in the xy plane, the angle in the xy plane to the positive ox axis. Uh, phi is an angle that comes down from the positive oz axis and rho is just a length to the origin. And here's the relationship between um, Cartesian coordinates xyz and spherical coordinates. So let's look back here and see if we can describe this field hemisphere by using our spherical coordinates. Well firstly how far down do I need to go 
with my phi. Well, at the top phi is zero, I go down a quarter of a turn, and phi will equal pi on two. So they're the bounds for my phi variable. What about theta? Well, if I just sort of fill in this little disk in the xy plane, if I start here, I go around one rotation and I'll, uh, I guess, um, sweep out the entire base of this field hemisphere. So theta will, will be between 0 and 2 pi. And what about the bounds on rho? Well, if I draw any line from the origin, I can see that this line enters at 0 and leaves at rho equals 1. So the bounds on rho would be 0 and 1. So let's write this all down. Okay, now, like I said before, rho is between 0 and 1. Phi, how far down do I need to go? Well, it's starting at 0 and go down a quarter of a turn. So it'll, it'll be between 0 and pi on 2. And to spin around in the xy plane, to, to sort of get, to sweep out the entire base of the um, hemisphere, I do one full rotation, so theta is between 0 and 2 pi. Now, without doing any calculations at all, I know that if the centre of mass is denoted by x bar, y bar, z bar, then symmetry and a constant density gives us 0, 0, z bar. And what's the formula for z bar? Well, z bar does involve triple integrals. And it's just the following. Okay. Ah, sorry. Delta. Where here delta is just the density function. Now because delta is a constant, I can bring that out the front, bring that out the front, and cancel them off. Okay, well... Let's look at the bottom integral. Does that look familiar? Well, the bottom integral is just the volume of the solid omega. Now, note that the solid omega is just a, a field hemisphere, so it's easy to calculate the volume. So let, let's do that. This is just the volume of omega, one of the basic um, applications of double integrals. So our omega is just a field hemisphere with radius 1, so it's just going to be a half times 4 on 3 times pi r squared, where r is 1, so we'll get 2 pi on 3. Now, of course, to calculate this, we need to do a little bit more calculations and they want, they want us to do it into in spherical coordinates. So, we're going to get our, um, our integration bounds from here after we make a change of variables. Okay, so, with the change of variable, all I'm going to do is reply, uh, putting my, my um, limits of integration from here in sphericals. I'm going to replace z with rho cosine phi. And I'm going to replace the volume element dv with rho squared sine phi d rho d 
uh, sorry, rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. A bit of a mouthful, but when you do a few of these problems, you'll get used to it. So let's make those substitutions, put in our limits of integration, and then we'll actually knock over the integral. Okay, so z gets replaced with rho cosine phi, dv gets replaced with the following. Now, note that all of these are constants. So essentially, we're integrating over um, some sort of um, rectangular prism. So what this means is I can actually split up the, the, this integral into the following form. Notice I've got, I have rho cubed and cosine times sine. So there's nothing here depending on theta or in here. So I can actually just pull these apart and treat them as products of integrals. So it's that integral times that integral times this integral. Okay, well that's easy, that's going to be 2 pi this is going to become a quarter and this is the slightly challenging integral so let's if, if this is 2 2 pi that's going to be a quarter so I'll bring that to the the front and the question is how do I integrate this well you might be able to integrate this um, by inspection but what I'm actually going to do is just go to a double angle formula okay so If I simplify out here, um, I'm going to get something like uh, pi on 4 at the front. And when I integrate, so I've brought that half to the front now. When I integrate sine of 2 phi, well, it's going to become something like cos of 2 phi with a negative. But when I differentiate this, I don't quite get this. So um, that 2 is going to come to the front. So I'm going to fix it up with this one half at the front. Okay, so now you put in your limits of integration and simplify. This will all become one, so you actually get pi on four. So to work out my z bar component, all I do is take this, divide it by this, and then I'll have my center of mass. So it's going to be pi on 4 all over 2 pi on 3. The pi's are going to cancel, and I'm going to get 3 on 8. Now, I know my 3 and my z look alike, so I'm sorry for that. That's just the way I write. And so the center of mass of omega is just 0, 0, 3 on 8. So this is a good um, lesson now in the value of symmetry. Whenever you're looking at um, your region and you want to calculate the centre of mass, if the density is constant, look for lines of symmetry. So that's the first uh, problem, part A. Let's have a look at part B. In part B, we're asked, asked to do the same thing. The density is constant again, but this is our region here. So if I make an equal sign there, z is non-negative, I can take a square root, and I'll actually get a cone as one of the bounding um, surfaces. And if I take this plane here, z equals 1, I'll get sort of an upper bounding plane. So let's draw that and see what happens. So 
here our solid is described by the following now if we have equal sign here that, and take the square root then this is, this is just going to give me a cone so the cone is going to be some sort of bounding um, surface and if I look at these surfaces, the bottom one's just the xy plane and the top one's just the plane z equals 1. So I'm going to cut my cone at z equals 1. So you can think of a plane horizontal to the xy plane that's going to cut the cylinder. And you can think of this as following. So our solid in this case is a cone and you can see again I've got this sort of line of symmetry the O's, along the, the OZ axis. Because the density is constant we know the centre of mass must lie on the positive OZ axis. So this is a bit like the previous question in the sense that our calculations can be hugely simplified. So the density is just constant Our center of mass of omega must satisfy this uh, equals zero. Yes. Now, the z bar, well, we need to calculate that particular component. So, how do we do it? Well, we're asked to use sphericals, so we need to describe this sort of filled cone in sphericals. Now, um, in the previous example, part A, it was reasonably easy to do that. What I'm going to do in this one is actually come up with the bounding um, surfaces or, or um, bounding constants through algebra. So let's look at what we have up here and try to use some of that information to come up with our pound. So let's consider this inequality here. Now I know that Z, the, the relationship between Cartesian and spherical for the Z is just here Z equals rho cosine phi. So what I'm going to do is replace Z with rho cosine phi. phi and see what happens. Now if I just take the cosine to the other side as long as it's you know positive, which it will be, I'll get the following. So these are the bounds then, the bounding functions, on my row. Now that's the most difficult part of this question because the other um, uh, bounds are quite simple. So if you think about the bounds on phi, so how far down do I have to go? I start at zero and I go down half a turn. Okay, so so the phi then is going to be between 0 and pi on 4. If you want to work that out a little bit more, well, what you can do is if you want to, you can draw a little right angle triangle in there um, and um, uh, work with that. But uh, you know, I don't think it's really necessary. Um, 
the last thing we have to do is work out well, what are the bounds on the theta. Well, if I sort of project um, omega xy plane, what I'm going to do is get some sort of disk with center 0, 0 and radius um, 1. So you can see to sweep out this um, the, the solid, the base of the solid, I need to do one full rotation in the xy plane. So theta is going to be between 0 and 2 pi. So combining all of this, we have we can we have the following. In terms of our spherical's, This is our description then of omega. Now, to calculate the center of mass, we know it's due to symmetry and constant density, we know the center of mass lies on the OZ axis, so x bar and y bar must be zero. going to be 0, 0, z bar with z bar equal to the following. So here we are using triple integrals. Now because these density functions are constant, we, again we can bring them out the front and cancel, very similar to the previous question. And this is just the volume of omega. So this is just the, the, uh, the volume of cone. So to calculate this, let's just look at the volume of omega. Okay, so it's a cone. If we regard this as the base, then the volume of the cone is just one third uh, pi r squared times the perpendicular height. So in this case, it's just pi on three. Now calculating this will be a little bit more involved. Okay, so we're going to make a change of variables. We're going to use these limits of integration. So I'm going to put in my limits of integration. I'm going to replace Z with rho cosine phi, just like I did in the previous example. And I'm going to replace dv with rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. OK, so I can't really um, um, sort of simplify this too much, except I do realize that there's nothing that depends on theta in here. So if I want to, I can pull out that outside integral and, um, and integrate it like that. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. So I can pull that out the front, and then I'm just going to work on what's left. OK, so. Let's integrate the inside integral first. When I integrate 
row cubed, I'm going to get a quarter row to the power 4. When I sub in this, I'm going to get 0. When I sub in this, I'm going to get something involving a power um, for uh, cos, the, uh, cos uh, 5 to the power 4. So if I did this integration and substitute in, I'm going to get something like this. Now, I can cancel off and I get something like this. Uh, let's take the four out, no, I'll take the four out the front, the one quarter. So I should get something like this. Now, how to integrate this? Well, you can do it a few ways. Um, notice that you've kind of got the, almost got the derivative of cosine up here. So if you let u equal cosine phi, then you can make a substitution and, and integrate this. Now, I'm, I, I don't need to do that. I can just recognize that the power here should go to something like a 2 because we, you know, it's on the bottom. If I differentiate this, well, I'm going to get something like a 2 up the top so what I need to do is touch up and um, touch up by this factor of sort of one half here. Now if I sub in phi equals pi and four and phi equals zero, then I'll get pi and four. So all I need to do now is take this and divide it by the volume. So it's pi on 4 um, all over pi on 3, which I calculated earlier. The pi's will cancel and I'll get 3 on 4. And so the center of mass of omega is just 0, 0, 3 on 4. Okay, so a couple of good things to remember. When looking at these problems, always look for symmetry. And um, if you have constant density, then you can use that to simplify your calculations.